Well, it's not a coincidence that it's often the poorest communities that are also the most polluted. In fact, if you think about the communities that you know of that are polluted, they inevitably are poor. If you think of the communities that you know that are poor, they inevitably have some kind of pollution problem, whether it's groundwater contamination, living in proximity to busy roads or highways, whether it's um, like Flint, Michigan, where they have lead in their waters, or whether it's like Salt Lake City, where they have um, just being trapped by these uh, coal-fired power plants and then having the air trapped inside of their communities. No matter the demographics, they, you can always connect both the issues of poverty and pollution it's deeply intertwined. And so for me, it's important for us to understand these intertwined problems as both the issue but also potential opportunity. It's a chance for us to reach out to people who are most directly impacted by these issues, to be allies, to join in the work, join in the fight. And in doing so, maybe they begin to see not only their power in addressing their own community issues, but also begin to be empowered enough to work with other community members to work together. So those have been some of the things that we've been doing here at Green for All. As I think about the relationship between the social and environmental sides of sustainability, to me, they are inexorably intertwined. You can't separate them. Um, when I hear people talking about, oh, we need to save the environment to save our planet, I don't buy that. Because no matter what humanity does, the planet, Earth, is going to survive. It is humanity, our civilization, that may not survive. If we just think about the impact of climate change on people, it really is poor people of color who are most disproportionately impacted by climate change. That can be here in San Francisco, it can be in New Orleans, it can be in New York, Shanghai, Bangladesh, the shores of the Mediterranean. So for me, again, the relationship between environment and poverty is inextricably linked. You can't address poverty without addressing issues in the environment. And I come from a background where I was focused first on human rights. And I realize today we need to be addressing the environmental impacts that we as a civilization are creating in order to be able to get at the issue of poverty. People really depend on nature. Um, the Nature Conservancy has always known that and we always thought the projects we do to protect ecosystems around the world benefited people. But um, five or six years ago we thought it would be in the best interest of the environmental and conservation movement to be even smarter about understanding how nature and people go hand in hand. So we asked our scientists, we're very much of a science-driven organization, to look hard at that topic or that opportunity. And we changed our mission statement, we changed our conservation approach so that we now try to protect nature in a way that benefits people in everything we do. And just about every example you can think of of environmental progress, it benefits people, or environmental harm hurts people, and it's vulnerable people who have the most to lose. And so then when you think about vulnerable communities, impoverished people around the world, they are dependent on nature usually more than other people, and really in harm's way when ecosystems are degraded. You know, think of climate change, drought, threats to water supply, um, these all hurt um, vulnerable communities in a very dramatic way. So we really do believe that protecting nature can benefit all people and most of all um, communities of the most vulnerable people of all. It's not just an economic issue, right? It's, you can't solve for um, poverty without addressing the issue of pollution. What is the point of having all the money in the world, a great paycheck, all of those things, if you're going to spend it all on health care? If you come home with a great paycheck, but then can't even have your kids play in the backyard, can't even have an elder walk to the mailbox without a mask on their face, as is happening now in Bakersfield, there's no point, right? And that's what actually some t countries, including China, have realized. In China, the push for environmentalism isn't a, a progressive, left-leaning, democratic push. It's a middle-class push because they realize that they now are beginning to have a burgeoning middle class, and yet their kids can't play outside. 
In fact, when I talked to a 20-year-old in, in China and I asked him why was he interested in environmentalism, he said, because I'd never been able to see a true blue sky when I was growing up. And so for us, those two issues are really in, deeply interconnected. If we want to have real solutions, we have to make sure that we're addressing both at the same time.